What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in New York City at Stadium Goods with YouTube OG, filmmaker, and jack of all trades, Casey Neistat. These are never and will never be okay. Gonna do some sneaker shopping today. Gonna see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then hopefully he's gonna buy some sneakers. Ready. Let's go. Casey, let's start here with tech heavy sneakers. We saw the vlog with you and Tiffany Beers going through the Air Mag. She wouldn't let me keep them, but I really? tried. Oh. I tried. That was when they had like three pair of them made. Okay. And they were generous enough to come give me a demo, but kudos to Nike for making these. Yeah. And what was it like just to like be one of the first to talk through it with her, who's such a big designer in Nike? I've been a Nike fan forever. I worked with Nike years ago. But the fact that they made these to sort of bring attention and awareness to the Michael J. Fox Foundation and all of that, it was the narrative behind it that was much more interesting to me than the actual shoe itself. It was so cool trying it on though. What was interesting was the sound that it makes. And I think she explained like how much energy and effort that went into getting the acoustics to sound like it did in the movie. Yeah. That, like, that attention to detail I just loved. Then the next iteration of self-lacing, Hyper Adapts, you gave these away. I think what's amazing about these um, or the exact reason why I gave my pair away. I thought they were brilliant, but like, you know, I have got 10 perfectly functional fingers so I can tie right. my own sneakers. So I did a little giveaway and I gave them to a friend of mine who has cerebral palsy. Wow. He doesn't have great motor controls in his hands. So he puts these on, he uses them exactly how they were meant to be used. That's amazing. And they've changed his life. So That's like, amazing, man. Sneaker tech does, does do a lot. It goes a long way, but I think, again, kudos to Nike for actually doing it. Casey, you've worn these. I saw you skated in these. What do you think about Kanye's design? Designs. I have these, and I also think I have these. I also got a pair of these for my wife. Nice. I think she's cute in them. I think like the, these are incredible. I think the 750s are amazing. Yeah. Because there isn't really a shoe that looked like this before this. Right. And when it comes to sneaker innovation, I mean, you look around at thousands of pairs of shoes in here, they all share a design language that is somewhat related. And I think that like the magic of this was that it stepped outside of that. Definitely. And I think that's entirely unique to what, to what the Yeezys did. That said, I'm, I'm a huge Kanye fan. I went to the first Kanye concert when it was like Jesus Walks. It was, yeah. it was like yeah. backpacks and button down. College dropout era. And no matter how much I love Kanye, and I love Kanye, these are never and will never be okay. Okay. Well, you know what this is? They have like a Balenciaga Triple S look, which you were tough on that shoe as well. You said it may have been the worst shoe ever made. The ugliest, so you're not the in, ugliest shoe ever the made. The ugliest shoe ever made. I mean, look, when it comes to being a hype beast, I think that like the box that I live in is it has to be a really cool product first. Has to be a good product. This is an incredible product. I have this thesis on Yeezy, the fashion line and the sneaker. Okay. Which is that Kanye wanted to wear pajamas and hotel slippers all the time. Because his entire line is like comfortable yeah. oversized sweats. Yeah. And these are like fucking hotel slippers. They're the most comfortable. It's but, true. But like, and for someone who spends a lot of time in hotels, you would know. But this is just not. It, it, I love you, Kanye. This is just not okay. We talked about Nike's technology, but Adidas, you know, they're always in competition. The Futurecraft 4D. 4D printing. I've actually seen these. 17 years of data went into building this, and it's a new process, digital light synthesis. Have you worn these? I haven't. You think it makes a better shoe? You know, I, I remember visiting Nike years ago and learning about how much energy and effort and technology goes into like the, the fabrics that they use, and it blew my mind. But you understand, like, the, the progress that sneakers make technologically is so incremental yeah. to make them better, but totally I'd try these out. Plus, they, they look dope. And do you like that we're in a world where the brands are really competing, not only from, like, a fashion standpoint, but from technology, one-upping each other, trying to? I think it's incredible. Like, I think it's fantastic. I think if you look at the biggest jumps I think I've seen are in running shoes and then basketball shoes. Yeah. Like the way basketball shoes look now versus when I was a kid is just night and day, and I think it makes the game better. Casey, you're a boosted board pioneer, but you've also skated throughout your whole life. I'm an old man. I'm like 36, I'm gonna be 37 soon, so now skateboarding is just a way for me to get from my office to my apartment, so I need like a big fat skateboard with a motor on it. But I used to skate, I used to skate for years. I was like a big pool skater, and when I was a kid, I never got the Nike SBs. They were too expensive, too fancy. I got like Etnies and then DC right. was my shoe because it had the fattest tongue and I needed the protection because I keep 
I kept hurting myself. Like yeah. that, that, that was my shoe, that was my skate shoe. And now you skate in Golden Goose. Yeah, I, I, I like Golden Goose a lot because I appreciate the craftsmanship of a handmade sneaker. But I think the biggest lie of Golden Goose is that they're fucking terrible skate shoes. Okay. They're literally like they say for skateboarding only on the tongue. And like these have a clear sole and no traction whatsoever. But they look good. Casey, you did a video. It was simply titled Hype Beast. And I was waiting for the Easter egg on what was gonna happen. And we're in front of the Supreme Louis Vuitton collection here. You had a Supreme Louis Vuitton bag, sort of. I mean, I caught hell for that video. But the story of that is like, my, my friend brought me a price sheet and it was for all the Louis Vuitton Supreme collab gear. Okay. But everything was pennies to the dollar. And he was like, it's, this is Chinatown knockoffs. Everything's plastic, everything's shit. Do you want anything? And I was like, yeah, give me the fucking red bag, the most expensive thing. And from a distance, like <laughs> from 10 good, feet man. away, if you squint, yeah. it looks real. And definitely on camera, it looks real. So I got it and I just thought it'd be funny. Like I had to go do a trip. I thought it'd be funny to have it with me, but just beat the shit out of it for the entire trip. And then like in the last two seconds of the video, I say this thing's fake, it's a 50 dollars Chinatown special. But the hype beast, like the kids tore me up for that. And sneaker YouTube. Give us some tips or, or some critiques. It's one of those things that like, you know, I, I love YouTube more than, it, YouTube is my, I credit my whole career to YouTube and what it's enabled. But I think something as esoteric as sneaker culture yeah. could never find a home outside of a place like YouTube. So with that, like I, I appreciate it. The yeah. fact that there's a huge fucking audience, millions of people willing to see a shoebox be open Crazy. and then having somebody stare at a sneaker and get into all the specifics and the stitching and like the design aspects. No, I fucking love that. Yeah. I just love subculture. One of your favorite shoes of 2017, Nike Zoom Fly, one of my favorites. What'd you love about them? I'm a huge runner. I ran 11 miles this morning before I came here. Wow. Huge runner. And this is the only shoe that I can wear because I like the way it looks that I can also run it. And so it's the only, like this weekend I went away and I didn't bring a pair of running shoes. I just rocked these. I ran them in the morning and wore them all day long. No, I, and I think honestly, I think this is the only shoe that bridges that gap. Besides the old school New Balance. Yeah which are kind of heavy to run in, but th those shoes you can run in as well, but they really like, they nailed it with this. Casey, we talked about everything now. Get to browse the shells, pick up some sneakers. It's my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Can I have the off-white Zoom Flies in 11 and a half? Yes, sir. All right. You think these Akron Impresto's match my shirt? Slightly, but I definitely would go with those. All right, let me take these in 11 and a half. The Calabasas 11. Sounds good. And that's three pair. I think that I think that that's it. So your total is going to be two thousand seven hundred and seventy-six and thirty-one cents. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You want a bag or no? No, I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Casey, thanks so much for coming through. Left with three awesome pickups, no bag needed. Nope, just gonna jump on my skateboard and go to my office now. You know where to find him, his YouTube channel and all over the internet. What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. Be sure to check out our brand new series, Talking Shop, to see exclusive bonus content from the PJ Tucker shoot. If you're a fan of sneaker shopping, you'll be a fan of Talking Shop. Click here and subscribe now.